Hello there, welcome to Ant and Nick's Cabin Fever. Uh, we're not in the cabin this week because we're here editing our new film on the ZX Spectrum. Which um, I'm delighted to say is coming along really, really well and there's some absolutely wonderful footage in there. Um, so much, so much stuff, so I can't wait to be showing you some of that soon. Uh, the cabin roof also has a leak, which is being fixed. That's that's handy. Yeah, <laughs> thought I'd just tell you that. Um, last week on the Stephen and Ant Commodore 64 of Courier Warriors episode of Cabin Fever, whilst waiting ages for a Courier Warriors to actually load, we talked about an unreleased clip from our archives about when Commodore 64 music legend Martin Galway first heard of Rob Hubbard and how this led to a competition, largely in Martin's head, on who was best. There was something I absolutely loved about last week's Cabin Fever with you and Stephen, and that was the bare-chested machine gunning. I never ever looked at it like that before. I thought yeah, it was amazing. So um, I feel like I need to go through and watch all the Rambo films again, which uh, could be good because I quite like watching. Well, I think I quite like watching bare-chested. Um, yeah, but it's bare-chested machine gunning, which I seem to quite like. Um, but anyway, yes, I'll, I'll stop uh, talking. <laughs> Well, many of you have dropped us emails over the last week asking to see the clip. Um, so we sort of pulled it out of our archives, gave it a bit of a spruce up, and uh, we're going to present it here for you this week. The clip that we're going to show you uh, was originally part of our first film from Bedrooms to Billions. So what we've decided to do, we have got so much footage that we would like to release. Um, but um, we particularly like this clip. But what we want to do, we're going to create something what we call the Gaming Chronicles. Um, and there'll be more on that in the coming weeks as we discuss more and more of the things that we're going to be doing. And without any further ado, I will hand you over to Martin Galway. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. It was around the time I was doing Never Ending Story that uh, Colin Stokes came in with a cassette and he goes, Mart, wait till you hear this, you've got to hear this. And uh, I looked on the cassette and it said, Thing on a Spring. Hmm, who's that? Oh, what's that? You know, put the game in. And uh, it was fairly late in the evening and everyone had left. And man, I had listened to that tune for like three hours, looping. I was like, that is so good. That guy really knows what he's doing. Oh my God, I've got some competition, you know? As a real uh, clarion call, what's the word? Like a bu it was like a bugle blast, you know? I really had to get my chops together to, to, get, to compete with this guy. I didn't know who it was who did the music, but whoever did the music in that game was, you know, leaps and bounds over everybody else. I'd been listening to games like Park Patrol and some of the other, some of the other American games and they just had really terrible music. When I put Thing in a Spring in, not only was the melody great, I mean this was a really great composer, so I was scared because at this point I felt I realized somebody else who's an actually a decent composer is now working on the Commodore 64, not just me with my fiddly arpeggios or whatever it might, my kind of trick might be. Um, I really had to pay attention and, and, and sharpen up. I didn't know who it was even for months. Didn't find out who it was, where he lived, if he worked for any particular company. See that was a Gremlin graphics game and I thought the Gremlin graphics music guy, you know, that's who I'm thinking who it is, but it wasn't, it was just a freelance guy who was working for anybody and his music started to crop up everywhere. So obviously as we all know it was Rob Hubbard. So when I came back from my vacation I saw Rambo First Blood Part 2 on the screen. And I saw that they had basically been ripping off Commando by Capcom. And we had the, uh, we'd had the, the Capcom arcade game in the Ocean Office for a long time, even since uh, 84, I think, was the first time I saw it. And it was one of my favorite games. I loved the music in that game because it was really good music. It had the, uh, what we now know as the FM synthesis chip in there, which is uh, used in Marvel Madness and a bunch of other games. So um, they had been using uh, Commando as their model for what Rambo First Blood Part 2 was going to be. And uh, once we saw the Rambo film itself, we were able to build in 
you know, specific stuff about the Rambo film. Um, but prior to that, it was basically a ripoff of Commando. And uh, so then it was announced in the press that Elite was doing the actual Commando official license. And so they naturally became a, a rival. And uh, I'm not sure if I found out Rob Hubbard was doing the music on that game, but that would have just made me hit the roof with like, you know, I just would have been like, oh my God, my ultimate arch rival dude, whoever he is, that mysterious guy somewhere else in the UK that I've never met, uh, you know, is, is working on this game that I'm also doing, you know, the, the film version that was basically a kind of a pseudo ripoff. So basically they came out around the same time and uh, Rob's music for Commando is fantastic. And uh, a great version of the, the tune that I was very familiar with, because I'd been playing Commando for a year or two. And uh, much better than the version of the Commando tune that I privately did, because I did actually do a version of that tune. I'm not sure where it is or whether it's been released. But uh, anyway, it made me really happy when I opened the pages of Commodore User one day, and they reviewed both games side by side in a double spread. And the little point scores at the bottom gave Rob's music four stars and gave my music five stars. So I like, I glowed all day and thought, thank God, the stress is over. I won't be tested now for another couple of months on whatever the next game is. So I, I managed to get a better score. Cause you know, the magazines like Zap64 and Commodore User and those other ones, they were basically your only feedback. There was no like forums, there's no internet, no you know, thousands of users all giving you feedback. Um, you had really no idea Unless you happen to stand around in W.H. Smith's and go, hey, uh, hey, lad, I did the music on that. And he'd be like, you what? You know, you, you wouldn't be able to really convince anyone that you worked on a game. No one would believe you because most game players thought game developers were gods. 